Well, good morning and once again, welcome to the live programme here. Uh, coming to you live from the Isle of Wight. A small island off of the south coast of England. Well, I say small, it's not It's not that small. It's not like some desert island with one palm tree on it. Um, about 13 miles by 26 miles. But anyway, welcome to you today uh, as you join me here. As we get together in the presence of God... Um, as usual, very expectant about what the Lord will do as we gather together here, as always. Because why? Because we serve a living God, because the God that we are connected to through Jesus Christ is alive. And our God lives forevermore. Jesus lives forevermore. And we can talk and communicate with our God, which is better than some forms of worship that people have where there's no expectation of ever actually connecting with the deity that you are um, worshipping um, or the deities that they worship are malevolent and they and very sort of um, I don't know one minute they're happy the next minute they're sad or angry and you have to appease them uh, that's how some people live with idolatry and things like that not a lot of fun in that really What's wonderful to know about our God is that he never changes. He never has any turn in him. He's always the same yesterday, today and forever. So anyway, welcome to the broadcast anyway. Uh, wherever you're tuning in from around the world, uh, God bless you. I say this most days, but remember that we are all one family in Jesus Christ. There is actually only one church in the world, the church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ, uh, with one true head, and that is Jesus. There are many people around with responsibilities and gifts and callings uh, that have, have been given to them by the Lord, but nonetheless, there is only one church um, in the world. You know, people that think that the, there is only their denomination or whatever must understand that you won't be sat in your denominational box in heaven. Um, you'll just be with believers um with jesus and um, so anyway welcome to the back uh, to the uh, to the background i just remember what somebody put well, I said, welcome to the program um yeah nice background behind me today very very believe it or not very windy where i am um so i'm in a sheltered area hopefully this will be okay with the broadcast i tried to get something interesting in the background or yesterday i was the reason i was where i was yesterday because it was actually raining when i was doing the program um and so you know, trying to uh, take into account all these different things. Anyway, welcome to Prem Prem this morning. Uh, Dominic Ferrano. Hi, Dominic. Hopefully see you this evening. Uh, David Kumar. Naveen Kumar. Sylvia Perez. Um, Sue Pai. Sue, Sue Pai in, I think he's in Burma. God bless you. Connected yesterday. Martin Onagondo as well. Um, Tyler Mintz, Toronto, Canada. Hi, Tyler. Betty Baker. Hi to you. Uh, hi, what work you? Ethiopia. God bless you, my friend. As you join uh, today with us here, gathering together with the saints of God from all around the world today, because we do serve a multinational God who's in every nation of the world. Don't believe everything you watch on the television or hear on the radio, or read in a newspaper, not everything in the world is completely falling to pieces. God is doing absolutely incredible, wonderful things in the nations of the world, and it's good that we um, report those things. Now, some of you may have saw that um, post I put up uh, on my uh, profile page yesterday about people praising God. If you haven't seen that, you want to have a look at that somewhere. I don't actually know where it was. It looks to be somewhere in Africa. A friend of mine thought it might be the Maasai um, tribes in Africa. But anyway, um, absolutely amazing watching all those people praising God together uh, with such joy and with such exuberance. Um, so if you get the opportunity, have a look on my profile page and you'll see there's a post there and you'll see loads and loads of people praising God all together. Most exuberantly, absolutely awesome to watch. Uh, one of the things that's always that most inspired me as a young Christian was the ministry of Christ for All Nations 
evangelist Reinhard Bonker, um, and I would watch videos of his crusades in Africa and things like that and see the multitudes of people uh, getting touched by God. Really quite extraordinary uh, what God has done through the ministry of Christ for the nations. And I know Reinhardt's still going, but also now under the leadership of uh, Daniel Kalender. And just wonderful what God is doing in the nations of the world through that ministry. Very, very encouraging. If you've never heard of Christ for All Nations or CFAN, C-F-A-N, I encourage you to look them up and look at some of the meetings they've had. They've had congregations of well over a million people at once. And when the camera pans around and you see a million people or so worshipping God together all in one place, it really is uh, quite a sight. And um, and so, you know, it's just good to see some of those things sometimes. Um, sometimes I think people can think that the church is absolutely falling to bits and collapsing everywhere. Not the case. God is moving powerfully all over the world. I mean... One of the greatest revivals to ever occur has happened in China with the underground church and things that are going on in China. Totally extraordinary. I know people have been into China and places like that, been a part of some of those things. Absolutely extraordinary uh, move of God uh, happening uh, around the world in so many countries. I know God is moving very powerfully, for instance, in Pakistan. I know there's problems, there's persecution, churches are being burnt as well, other things are going on. But nonetheless, the gospel is breaking through and prevailing in many places of this world, far beyond, I think, what many people believe. Surely the Bible does say that in the end, darkness will increase. But when darkness increases, the light shines even brighter. Uh, I think it's all down to your perspective, what you're going to look at. Um, now, the Bible tells me to fix my eyes on the author and the finisher of my faith, Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's a word for somebody today watching the program. Don't keep looking at the negative all the time. Look on Jesus. Fix your eyes on the author and the finisher of your faith. Go to prayer by all means. But don't just keep dwelling on negatives and looking on negatives because there's a lot of joyful and good things to see also. And and. The Bible tells us whatever is good, whatever is noble, whatever is lovely, whatever is pure, think on these things. Amen. Uh, and the more that you draw near to Jesus, the more wonderful things will flood your heart and spirit. And God wants to use you in this world to effect change wherever you are. We've been talking a lot about this recently. Uh, just... Uh, talking about the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the power of this good news that we have in Jesus. Tremendous power, tremendous power. Uh, and, uh, and when we share this good news, how the Holy Spirit of Almighty God, who is resident on the earth, comes with supernatural, miracle working, God authority power into the situation to change the lives of men and women, boys and girls all over the world with the power of the good news of Jesus Christ. So we've got a lot to be thankful for. We've got a lot to celebrate. We've got a lot to keep um, keep on keeping on with because ultimately, ultimately, friends, listen to me today. Ultimately, we win. Put that in your spirit today. Ultimately, we win. I've read the end of the book. I've read what's coming in the prophetic scriptures. We win. Amen. We win this thing. Hallelujah. And God's already preordained that to happen. There will come a time when Jesus will return and everything will be wrapped up. And the purpose and plan of God is going to prevail. My friend, you must put that in your spirit. Don't listen to the devil. Don't listen to these other things. Jesus Christ is glorious. The Bible tells me he rose up and he took captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. He, 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 the power of the grave could not hold Jesus Christ. And he rose from the dead. He broke the power of sin and death. Hallelujah. 
He triumphed over the written code, having nailed it to the cross, the book of Colossians tells us. So we have victory today in Jesus Christ. Amen? There is power in the name of Jesus. There is victory in Jesus. And like I said, put this in your spirit. We win. <laughs> we win this thing. Amen? The enemy does not want you to think that way. He wants to feel, you to feel that you're beleaguered and battled and fighting and just trying to hang on until you get to heaven. That is not the way it is. We are here to expand the kingdom of God. And that's why Jesus Christ comes to you with his power and with his glory and with his strength. That's why the Holy Spirit has been sent to you to empower your life, your Christian walk, to give you strength and fortitude and understanding and wisdom and revelation so that you can expand the kingdom of God wherever you are on the face of this earth. The authority belongs to Jesus and the authority has been delegated to us, the church of Jesus Christ here on the earth. Friends, we win. We win. Hallelujah. And there'll come a day when that glorious king of heaven will come again. Oh, Rabbi Shah, twice he's told me I'm coming soon. Once in Jerusalem, Israel in 1998, as I stood looking at the Mount of Olives for real with my natural eyes, I was physically there and Jesus said to me, tell my people I'm coming soon. 2008, Southampton, England, dramatic heavenly encounter with Jesus. He said the same thing to me again. He said, tell my people I'm coming soon. On both occasions, I said to him, Lord, they won't believe me. He said, tell them anyway. But it's time to blow the trumpet in Zion. It's time to sound the alarm to the church. Rise up from your stupor. Come out of the sleep. Come out of the coma. Come out of the complacency. You know, as the by Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Men will be giving in marriage, carrying on business, thinking, oh, well, never going to happen. Nothing's going to come. And then the day come. It's just like in Noah's day. Noah preached for over a hundred years. He was a preacher of righteousness. Nobody listened to Noah. And then the day came when everybody was swept away. And the only people to survive was Noah, his wife, his three sons and his three sons' wives. Nobody listened to Noah. They laughed at him when he preached. They laughed at him when he was building the, uh, the ark. They laughed. They didn't laugh that day when God shut the door on the ark and the waters were rising and everybody was dying. But there is an ark of safety today for you to run into. And that ark, just like there was a physical boat to protect them from the water, that ark you have today is Jesus Christ. And you run to him and he'll keep you safe. Amen. Jesus Christ will be with you forever. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. There's none can challenge him. No one, no one or nothing, no entity, no being, not the devil and all his minions put together can even put a glove towards Jesus. They can't handle Jesus. He's too powerful for them. He's far beyond them. They're not even on the same universe. And I'll tell you something, they know it as well. The demonic world knows exactly who Jesus is and they are frightened stiff of him. Literally, they are terrified of the Son of God because they know who he is and they know they can't challenge him, they can't touch him, they can't hurt him and they know that he, he and Father are going to order their throwing into the lake of fire at some point. There is no fear, sorry, there is fear in the camp of Satan and his minions about Jesus. Utter fear. They know who he is. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the king of glory. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And that is who Jesus Christ is today. And they know this. What they don't want you to know is that they know this. The enemy tries his games with intimidation and fear um, to try and... Um, you know, get you worried and all this kind of thing. 
But I'm telling you, you get a revelation of who Jesus Christ is and who is living inside of you and who stands alongside of you. God begins to open your eyes just like he opened the eyes of Gehazi, the servant of Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 6. Do you remember that story? The, the Assyrian army had surrounded Dothan, the city of Dothan. They were going to arrest that great prophet. Because he was telling his king what the enemy king's battle plans were. And the enemy king was whispering in an inside tent with only his generals. Nobody else was in there. But the prophet Elisha could hear by the spirit of God everything they were going to do and was reporting it to his king. And so uh, they, they, they sent an army to kill him. They thought, we've got to get rid of the prophet. He's a nuisance. He's causing us all these problems. They thought they had a traitor in their own camp. But then one of their men said, no, 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 that isn't the thing. It's the prophet Elisha. He's telling the king of Israel what's going on. He's the problem. He is the one. So they sent the entire army to arrest the prophet. Do you remember that story? 2 Kings chapter 6. Well, then his servant Gehazi, he, he looks out one day and he sees the army surrounding the city. And he's thinking, oh, no, they've come for Elisha and I work for Elisha. I'm done for. That's what he's thinking. And he goes to his master, the prophet, and he tells him all, all of this. And the prophet's just sat there in his chair. Totally at peace. And he turns to uh, Gehazi and he says, God. He said, open his eyes. Let him see what I can see. Because those who are with us are much more than those who are against us. And all of a sudden, all around Elisha, the eyes of the servant were opened and he saw chariots of fire and the angel armies of God surrounding him. On this hillside behind me here, it was a bit like the whole hillside, full of the angelic armies of God surrounding the great prophet of Israel. And then Gehazi knew. And that prophet got up and prayed and blinded the entire Assyrian army. There was more power in that one man and in the entire army of Israel. Because that one man, Elisha, was connected to almighty God. Almighty God. And I pray today that that same God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of Israel, <coughs> would open your eyes and that you would see who is with you too. Friends, we are not alone today. We are not alone today. We are surrounded by God himself, surrounded by the angelic forces of God. We are not alone. And I pray that Almighty God will open your eyes to the reality of who is with you today. Amen. Just like Elisha prayed and Gehazi's eyes were open. Lord, I pray, open their eyes today. Let people see the truth. Break the lie of the enemy that you're on your own. You can't do it. It's too, too much and he's too strong. Nonsense. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. There is a person of immense power living on the inside of you, Jesus Christ. He has the name above all names. And I pray that God would put a confidence in your spirit in who Jesus really is. I'm praying for a great unveiling upon the body of Christ, of Jesus Christ, of him, the glorious resurrected son of the living God. Oh, so wonderful. Like John on the island of Patmos. And he saw Jesus resurrected, face shining brighter than the sun, feet like burnished bronze, eyes blazing like fire, standing there saying, hey, I am the first and I am the last. I am the living one. Behold, I was dead, but now I'm alive and I live forevermore. His voice was like many waters thundering there to John the apostle. And oh, how we need to see Jesus in all of his magnificence, in all of his glory, in all of his resurrected power and strength. And he delegates that strength to you, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells within you, my friend. 
And that is why we must be filled with the Holy Spirit. We must be filled with power from on high because he'll take you and fill you with all of his capability, all of his strength, all of his power, all of his ability. Doesn't matter what you have or haven't got. He's not relying on you. He's relying on himself in you. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, touch every person watching this broadcast today. I pray a fresh fire from heaven would come upon you. A fresh anointing would come upon your life, upon your ministry, upon your church, upon your family. In Jesus' name, may the fire of God be released upon the people. Receive strength today. Receive hope. Receive confidence. I break the power of all wickedness away from you today right now in Jesus name oh hallelujah thank you Jesus touch your people now I pray I rebuke arthritis go pain go stiffness in joints go be loosed in Jesus name right now glory to God thank you Lord touch your people fill them with strength fill them with power Fill them with hope. Oh, that we would truly see Jesus in all of his glory and for who he exactly is. It's the greatest pursuit of, of mankind is to have the unveiling of Jesus Christ to your heart, your mind, your understanding, your life. That's what the Apostle Paul prayed for in one, Ephesians 1.17. The eyes of our heart will be enlightened. There will be understanding. We would know who he is. We would see him in his magnificence and in his power and in his glory. Wendy Ma said she's got pain in her arm uh, due to long-term severe diabetes. Folks, join with me now, I pray, right now. In Jesus' name, we pray for you, Wendy. We rebuke that pain in your arm. In Jesus' name, I rebuke diabetes as well. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we release your healing power over Wendy Marsh right now. Pain, go out of that arm. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody around the world, just join with me right now. Some thumbs up also, just to show, show Sister Wendy that you're praying for her, to encourage her today. That the saints of God are praying for you, Wendy, that we can see past the end of our own nose. And we do care about other people, to pray for other people. There you go, Wendy. Look at those things going up now. That's the heart and prayers of people for you today. Blessing you, praying for you, calling upon the name of Jesus for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for that. Glory to God. Let me just... Uh, I'm trying to keep up with this thing. It's going so fast. Welcome, people, to the program. Anyway, um, Susan Gray, Samuel Chand, M. Uh, Dakshina, Evangelist John, Sylvia Perez, um, uh, Sukumar Takapudi, Inde Garcia Tindoy, Hector Abigail, Albert Apoko Darkwa, um... Dabasina Nayak Nayak Dabasia, um, Gloria Casal, Betty Baker, I think I've said to Betty, uh, Keith Jacks, Arai Shine Lordes, uh, Lenkin Barty, uh, Kwasia Masia, um, again, apologies if I get your name wrong, uh, Dar Tarik, uh, Sharif Masia, Raju Mayadu, Raju Madu, rather, shall I say, Aftab Aslam, Ruth Smith, Clara Fox Champions, Brian Gibson, Wendy Marsh, um, anyway, Tyler Mintz, Helene in Canada. Uh, God bless every one of you as you join us to, together today here, uh, live from the Isle of Wight. There's a mighty presence of God. The anointing of God is moving. And we just got to jump into the river of what God is doing. But he wants to open your eyes today, just like Elisha prayed for Gehazi. Open your eyes to see that you are not alone, that the angelic army of God is with you, let alone God himself and the Holy Spirit is with you, is with me. We're not alone. And at our disposal is the power of heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus ascended into heaven and then he handed the baton on to the Holy Spirit. He's come to the earth and he's handing that out to the church and saying, go in the name of Jesus and expand the kingdom of God. 
Let me put it to you this way. Um, Jesus is the sheriff and you're a deputy. The sheriff's got his badge, the deputy's got his badge, and all the power of the government and the, and the force of the authorities is behind that badge. So whether you're the sh sheriff or the deputy, you got a badge. Jesus gives you a badge and deputizes you, and now you have authority. That is what you receive from Jesus Christ. And he has all authority and all power and all dominion in the whole universe. Jesus' strength and power is derived from the very throne of God itself. There is no higher place of authority or seat of judgment than the throne of Almighty God. And that is where the authority and power that we have received comes from. Under the leadership and direction and for the glory of God. But nonetheless, that is where the fire of God, the power of God, the person and the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That is what all that is connected to. You're going to see that today. Have a revelation that when you begin to speak the name of Jesus, you are invoking the power and authority connected to that throne right there in heaven. That is what you are calling on. When you call on the name of Jesus, you are calling on all the authority and government of heaven to back up that prayer, to, to manifest as a result of you calling upon Jesus, declaring his name, releasing his authority here into the earth. As we preach the gospel, great power goes forth. And the Spirit of God is waiting to confirm the words of his people. Hallelujah. He wants to confirm the word today. He wants you to have a confidence in him. That you can do it. It's not a confidence in ourselves. But it's a confidence in who God is. And what he's capable of doing. As I said before. My confidence is not in myself. I'm not trying to summon up faith and all this kind of thing. My confidence is in the character and the nature of who he is. That he will confirm his word. He is truth. He is integrity. And he will do what he has said he will do. We know that Jesus spoke. John chapter 1 verse 3. John chapter 1 verse 10. And the world was framed and brought into being. And the... And so when that person out of his lips can speak the universe into being, if he gives us a plan, if he gives us a commission and a task, you've got to know he means what he says and he will back up what he has given us to do. So in Jesus, who spoke the world into being, you've got you to see him. Jesus, the planet maker. You've got to see him in all his glory, in all his magnificence, in all of his strength, in all of his radiance. For who he is, the mighty king of glory. If only I had words to describe him. If only I, I knew enough of him to adequately transmit to you who Jesus really is. Oh, Lord, bring great revelation to each one of us of your magnificence, of who you are, Jesus. We lift you up today. We worship you. We honor you and glorify your name in the nations of the world. And that's one of the great things the Holy Spirit is doing in the earth, is magnifying Jesus, magnifying, illuminating, bringing revelation, understanding of this good news of the gospel. Of the cross and its power. The blood and its power. The resurrection <coughs> of Jesus Christ in its power. And this is what God is doing. That's what the Holy Spirit is doing. He's magnifying Jesus Christ in the earth. He wants to bring revelation to the whole body of Christ. Of the power of the cross. The power of the blood. The power of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is going to be the theme right to the end of this thing. As more and more and more the body of Christ gets refocused back to Jesus, back to the cross, back to the blood, back to the resurrection, back to the soon coming king. That's what God is doing in the earth. 
Like the Apostle Paul said, I've decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. And that's what the Spirit of God wants to illumine to the people of God on the earth, that we can go forth with this magnificent gospel of Jesus Christ, with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the person of the Holy Spirit, directing us, leading us, confirming the word with signs, wonders and miracles. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Welcome to... Um, Shivan Spark as well has joined us. Uh, Bob Griffin. Hi, Bob. Um, Mimi Cloetti. Raj Lone. Uh, Sarah Towers as well. Um, God bless every one of you joining today. But receive strength in your spirit, man, today as you receive revelation of the magnificence of Jesus Christ. Far above all rule, power and dominion. He that has the name that is above every other name. He who exalted up to the right hand of God the Father and sat down at the, at the right hand of the majesty on high. That is the Jesus. That is the Yeshua that I'm talking about. The Mashiach, the Messiah, the King of glory. That is who John saw in Padmos, that incredible revelation of Jesus Christ. And more and more and more, you're going to find the Spirit of God just overwhelming you with incredible revelation of Jesus and all of the parts of the covenant that belong to us. All of the factors written in Isaiah 61 becoming alive to you uh, once again. For maybe for the first time, you'll see Jesus in all of his power and glory in that way, as much as a man can take. I've often had this thing, how much can you know God and be alive on the earth? How much can you walk with him and know him and know his heart and know his voice and perceive his similitude and be with him and yet still be in the flesh? How much of his presence can there be... Uh, Flowing in our life to those around us. Let's try and find out, people. Amen. <laughs> How anointed by God can you possibly be? How much of his love and grace can flow through your life to a hurting and broken world? I don't think anybody's found that out, apart from maybe Enoch. Come on, people. How much of God can we have flowing out of us? He's given everything for you. He's given everything for me. Jesus gave his life. He willingly laid it down. Surely now it is our turn to do our reasonable service. To give us, give him our lives. And say, Jesus, here I am. Let me be a conduit of your love and your fire and your grace and your power in this earth. Use me, Lord, for your kingdom glory and for the sake of those in the world. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, touch hearts today, I pray. Break off every negative thing that's been coming against your people today. Anoint every person with fire from on high that is preaching the gospel and ministering the word of God. Remember, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit, says the Lord. And he wants to move through you with great power to the people of the earth. Great strength. He wants to cast out devils, heal the sick and make disciples. He wants to bring people out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of his marvelous light. That is the Jesus we serve. And you're going to find that there is a power, there is an anointing, there's an unction, there is a fire that's coming upon the preaching of the word, the preaching of the gospel like never before. The Spirit of God showed me the other day. He said, I am pouring out my spirit for the gospel to prevail in a fresh way. The gospel is going to prevail in the nations of the world. Fires are starting Everywhere, spiritual fires of breakthrough and revival coming in places. Oh, just receive today, wherever you are. And say, Lord, let there be a revival in my life, in my community, in my country. Set the church on fire and bring in the nations of the world. Oh, hallelujah. Bless you, Tyler. Get some sleep, man. I'll catch you soon. 
But God wants to release his anointing and his fire all around the world. Just like that day in the upper room when the body of Christ was baptized, was immersed in the spirit of God himself, fully immersed in the spirit of God in his presence. And he wants to overflow into your life, into your ministry, into your town, your city, your village, wherever you are, and this gospel to break forth. He desires that none should perish and that all would come to everlasting life. The Spirit of God wants to give you confidence that when you speak the word, he will confirm the word with his strength, with his power, with his fire. Truly, the Bible tells me, signs and wonders follow the preaching of the gospel. That is normal ministry, normal Christianity. A normal state of the way <clears throat> is for the presence and power and fire of God to be flowing in everything we are and everything we do. For chains to break, for devils to be cast out, for sicknesses to be healed, for lives to be saved and transformed uh, from, from, from not knowing God to being in a, a wonderful relationship with God. To receive forgiveness. To receive release from shame. The gospel contains with it so much power, it's unbelievable. Really, in one sense, it's so powerful. And God wants to, Holy Spirit wants to reveal the power of the gospel to us. It's much more powerful than you think. Jesus said, my words, they are spirit and they are life. When we release the word about Jesus, we release life. We release the spirit of God in an incredible way. As we will speak the words about Jesus Christ. Don't you know the Holy Spirit? He will always, always, always confirm Jesus. He has been sent to the earth to confirm Jesus Christ to the world. To authenticate the gospel message. To convict the world of sin and righteousness and the judgment to come. This is why the Spirit of God is here. To bring the gifts of God. To bring the fruit of God into the body in the earth. And I pray that today you begin to feel something welling up on the inside of you. As faith begins to hit your spirit afresh today. Friends, like I said at the beginning of the program, I've read the end of the book. We win. We win. We are not defeated. We're not on the back foot. Actually, we're on the offensive, taking ground for the kingdom of God, expanding the kingdom of, of God in the earth. But he wants to strengthen the feeble arms. He wants to strengthen the feeble knees. He wants to lift up his people and fill them with love and grace and encouragement and power today. I pray that the Spirit of God would baptize you afresh today in his presence, in his fire, in his love and his glory. And I pray that you would shake off the things of the past. You would shake off the lies of Satan and all these things that set themselves up against the knowledge of God. Truly, one with God is a majority. You and God is the winning side. You and Jesus, you and the Holy Spirit, you and God the Father, that's the winning team. There's no debate. It's not going to go to a points decision. It's knockout blow time. And that is who we are today we're a people vitally connected to the throne of God itself in heaven. And all authority and power that exists in and around that throne and upon that throne is to you. Through Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit empowering you with heaven's ability. I pray that you see that today. I pray that your heart is encouraged and you'll feel lifted up today. Welcome also to Jerry, me, and Goy Tom, Michelle as well. Hallelujah. Amen. There's tremendous power in the Word of God. Amen.
Do you know you're loaded with power? You're filled with the Holy Spirit. You're loaded with power, potential, ability, creative ability. Because he's in you and he's all about all of those things. I do pray, Lord, as I said at the beginning, you would open the eyes of people to see who they are and who is with them. Because they are not alone. You are not alone. And once again, I pray, just as Elisha prayed for Gehazi, Lord, open their eyes. Let them see. Just who is with us. Just who is with us. I'm not alone. And I know I'm not. I've seen some of the angels that have been with me and around me. I even talked to some of them. I know I'm not alone. And neither are you. And I pray that God will open your eyes to see that you're not just a human wandering around on the earth on your own. But there's also the angelic army of God that is with the people of God. The Spirit of God is with us. That is more than enough. It's more than enough. It's no good calling me in the middle of a live broadcast. The person that just tried to ring me. You're not going to get me. I'm in the middle of a live program right now. So it's no good ringing me on messenger. Because I can't talk to anybody like that. Amen. We are surrounded by the dynamic presence of the angelic forces of God. The Holy Spirit is, with, is, he is within those of us that have received Jesus Christ. And he wants to fill you with and baptize with the Holy Spirit, power and fire. He wants to fill you with overflowing. God it wants to, you to understand these things. You're not just little old me. You are in one sense and so am I. <clears throat> I might be little old me, but I've got big old God with me. Amen. Just like when Moses and Aaron went down to Egypt. A couple of old boys going to Egypt. Between them they were 163. With a stick. Going to Egypt. See the most powerful king with his palace and his armies and everything else. A couple of old boys jobbing down the road. But God was with them. The whole Assyrian army came against Elisha, but God was with him. And the armies, the angel armies of God and the chariots of fire filled the hill behind him. A bit like there's a hill behind me here, full of the chariots and angels of God and the fiery army of God right behind him. He prayed one prayer and blinded the whole army. God was with him. Hallelujah. Many times... We see how God intervened and, and, and was there mightily throughout the Bible. And so today, be encouraged, be strengthened in your spirit, man, because it isn't all about you, it's about who is with you. <laughs> Amen? It's who is with you. Oh, get that in your spirit. That who is with you? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for making this truth real to all of the people watching this broadcast today. I'm not talking with you just as an abstract thought or just a, well, isn't that a nice thing? No, no, no. no. I'm talking about the reality of the supernatural presence and power of God. A friend of mine many years ago, said to me, Chris, the Holy Spirit, he will be as real to you as you allow him to be. And she used to get up every morning and she would say, good morning, Holy Spirit. And then they would start a day off in this incredible relationship with God. And more and more and more, I don't know about you, but I want to just be experiencing this wonderful, incredible relationship with God in my life. More, 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 more. I want to know him. Walk with him. Amen. But preachers, know this today. He wants to confirm your word. 
He wants you to have a confidence that when you tell people about Jesus, when you preach from the word of God, he wants to come and confirm that word with supernatural power, signs and wonders. And I know that because he does it. And he wants to put that in your spirit. You know, Isaiah 61, it says this. Um, Jesus says, he started off with, The Spirit of the Lord God, <coughs> excuse me, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Jesus knew the Spirit of God was upon him. He knew he was within him. He knew that he was anointed. God wants you to know that you are anointed. The Spirit of God wants you to know you are anointed. If you have received him, you are anointed with power from on high. That is not arrogance. It's understanding. It's knowing who you are functioning and living and being in that anointing and calling of God that you have received. Knowing that you are sent by Him. Knowing that the sheriff has deputized you and given you a badge. And when the deputy put on that badge, all of a sudden he felt like a different person because now he's like, I know I've got authority. I got me badge. I got me understanding that I'm connected to a power higher than myself. You are connected to a power higher than yourself. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 61, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because He has anointed me. That word anoint is to smear, to rub in, to anointed me to preach the good news. Church, the Spirit of God wants to anoint you to preach good news and for you to know that you are anointed to preach that good news, that you have the endowment of heaven, the power of God, the favor of God, the miracle working power of God upon your life to preach this gospel good news to people about Jesus Christ. I pray even now that the presence of God would surround you and that the Lord God himself would confirm my word today. Holy Spirit, I ask you, confirm this word to every person watching this broadcast live here now or watches the recording at any time in history. I pray right now that the fire and the power of the anointing of God is coming forth upon your life. Receive the presence of God right now in the name of Jesus. Truly be anointed by the Holy Spirit. May He fill you through and through. Open your heart. Open your, 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 yourself to Him and say, Spirit of God, fill me with power from on high. Fill me with your personage. Fill me with your presence. Fill me with your love. Set me ablaze. Turn from all sin. Abandon all that rubbish. Prepare the altar and say, God, send a fire. Oh, Let it fill you to overflowing. And he will do immeasurably uh, beyond all that you can even ask or think. Way beyond anything that you can ask or think. But he so wants to anoint the body of Christ to preach the gospel with miracles, signs and wonders following, with great power, with great conviction, as Jesus is magnified and lifted up. We don't need a new message. We need to preach the right message, which is Jesus. And when he is lifted up, the Spirit of God will come in like a mighty rushing wind. He will confirm that word. I just want to share something now. In 2008, I was called up to heaven. And while I was there, I looked on my right hand side and there standing was a large uh, white horse. And I thought, and I knew Revelation 19, this is Jesus' horse. 
So I think in Revelation 19, Jesus, horse, all this stuff is going through my heart and spirit. And then I saw Jesus coming towards me, wearing a majestic robe, striding powerfully uh, towards me. And then voices began to cry out in heaven. He's preparing to get on the horse. He's preparing to get on the horse. They were really fervent, really powerful. They weren't British. <laughs> There was a sense of urgency that we need to understand where the prophetic clock is, that time is coming to an end and that he's preparing to get on the horse and how we need to get on with it. And then Jesus said this, tell my people I'm coming soon. I said, Lord, they won't believe me. He said, tell them anyway. But then he said this, I want to return a sense of confidence back to the British church. That when they preach the gospel, I will confirm their word with signs, wonders and miracles. And he said to me, if you will bring Isaiah 61 to the people, I will pour my fire upon them. And I tell you, friends, everywhere that that has been shared, the fire of God falls every single time, has not missed in nine years Every single time, because he wants to confirm that word. He wants to confirm confidence back to the British church and the, not just the British church as well. The church worldwide. I preached that in Portugal, United States, Canada, England. I preached that message every time. He's Jesus saying, I want to give you confidence in the gospel. The fire of God comes. The anointing of God comes. The power of God comes. He wants to anoint you. With a great confidence in the gospel. To preach the word of God with love, with grace and with power. That the blind would see, that the deaf would hear, that the cripples would walk. That the demon eyes would be freed. That those that are living in a great darkness would see the light. That we'd be transformed out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of his marvellous light. There is no greater miracle than the miracle of salvation. Transforming the eternal destiny of a living soul. What price do you put on a soul, friend? What price do you put on a soul? What price? And there is a mighty revival breaking here. The fire of God is coming upon people. I'm hearing about different things as there's this great release of the Spirit of God coming on the, the preaching of the gospel. It's not going to be on some fad. It's not going to be on to popularize some group or people. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hear my words today. It's all about Jesus. And it's this revival that's coming will be characterized by the mighty manifested presence of God confirming the gospel and all of its attributes. Salvation, healing, deliverance, breakthrough, uh, you know, discipleship. That is what is coming into the church again. God is blowing a new wind into the church, setting people free. I'm seeing people delivered and set free all the time. And they're all in the church. But friends, it's time for breakthrough. Some of us are convinced that we, that, you know, that we know it all and all this stuff. But, you know, <laughs> Jesus came to the seven churches of Asia. And one of the things he says, he says, you think you can see. But you're poor, you're naked and you're blind. And I counsel to you, buy from me gold. Oh God of heaven, open our eyes. I pray, Lord, as Evan Roberts prayed in Blind Anarch, in that chapel. And he said, oh God, bend me, bend the church, bend me, bend the church. Oh God, I pray. Every person watching this broadcast, bend us, Lord. Bend the church. May we go to your will and your way. Oh, Lord, touch your people, I pray today. I pray for dynamic breakthrough in your life, in your ministry. Wherever you are. 
Maybe you need to fall on your knees. Maybe you need to just get before God. That's between you and him. You don't have to tell me what you're doing. But I pray that today something would break forth in your life, in your ministry. You can't go on the way you've been. We, we can't do it. We need a breakthrough to come. We need a fresh wind of God blowing incredibly through the body of Christ in Great Britain, in the United Kingdom, and in the nations of the world. My goodness, we need the fire of God to fall from heaven, just like the day of Pentecost. Then when Peter got Peter stood up to preach his words, they were charged with the power of God. Charged with supernatural power. And he preached Jesus with such strength that people were cut to the heart and said, what must I do to be saved? That is the kind of conviction and power that God is putting on the church. <clears throat> I've been preaching this for a few years. Receive today. Breakthrough. Know that these truths are from God. He wants to touch you to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. The main thing is the main thing, and it's Jesus. Go rabba si ko rabba baba, he ko rabba shanda, ko rabba shanda. I pray that the Lord would thunder that in your spirit today. <clears throat> I pray if you feel like Lazarus, then the God would bring you out. Come out, live, live to your calling. Live to the prophecies you previously received. Live, live, live to everything that God has commanded for your life. I speak resurrection to lives, to ministries, to dreams, to bodies. I speak breaking through today, right now, in the name of Jesus. Oh, touch your people, Lord. Set them ablaze. Every limitation... Break off of the people of God. Every lie that surrounded you. Every cursing word that's been spoken over you. I break it today in Jesus. I call you out of the grave you've been in. Live in Jesus' name. It's almost like I see something unwinding from around somebody. God is setting you free right now. The truth of his word Setting you free right now. Right now. Oh, Rabba Sakura Baba Shanda. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Seek the Lord where he may be found. Glory to God. Glory to God. I pray that there's something of that spirit of revival, something of that fire of heaven, you know, something that God is doing in this day, in this time. We'll get on you. We'll get in your life that you will be transformed, that you will be changed, that the anointing of God will fall afresh upon you today, wherever you are around the world, watching the recording, watching live watching it six months from when I'm speaking this, whatever, I pray that the fire of God will fall upon you and transform your life. Oh, Rabba Siko, Rabba Baba Shanda. Touch them, Lord, I pray. May your word resonate in the spirits of people watching this program. May the fire of God be blazing upon your heart and spirit with the truth of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just welcome a few more people to the program. Rebecca Savage, Andrew Chapman, Angela Samuel. People have been joining us. I encourage you. To, to watch the rest of the word if you've only just joined in when you get the chance. I tell you, daily the Lord seems to be flowing with great strength and power and anointing. Just receive everything he has for you today. And remember at the end of it all, you know, when God has used any of us, we're just an unprofitable servant. It's all to do with him and his grace and his glory. But we must receive the strength of God. 
You need a touch from heaven right now. If you need healing in your body um, or something like that, um, you might want to type your request on the screen. And I pray for the power of God to touch you. And everybody around the world comes together in, in agreement with me. It's like the modern day prayer cloth. We can send the word to you rather than sending a physical handkerchief. We'll send the word to you and God's spirit will touch you right where you are. And so today, if that's you and you've got a request like that for healing in your body, just type it on the screen right now. And we're all going to pray for you from all around the world. And the fire of God is going to hit you and going to touch you on the other end of this camera. Wherever you are, whatever country you're in, wherever you're uh, living, God can touch you right where you are and we'll come into your house and touch you. But Father, we pray for Crystal. We pray right now that there'll be healing in Crystal's body in the name of Jesus. Donna Morris's request there right now. People of God agree with me for Crystal in Jesus' name that healing would flow into the body of crystal. Wendy Ma said her son has got mental strongholds and needs real deliverance. Wendy, does he know Jesus? That would be my question to you. Hi, John. Welcome to the program. But you see the tremendous power in Jesus Christ. We must connect people to Jesus, the greatest power of all the universe that there is. The greatest power that there is. I pray for Angela Samuel right now. Uh, for her, a low immune system. Lord, right now. I pray that, Lord, your fire would come upon Angela right now in the name of Jesus. I speak to her immune system and I say be healed. In the mighty name of Jesus, right now, Angela Samuel, let the fire of God touch you now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. And if, if you're beginning to feel uh, the, the power of God upon your body there, Angela, just let us know. Just type it on the screen. Because you encourage people when they pray for you around the world and they see the results are happening, the action is happening, that, that something's happening to people. You encourage people to keep praying more and more for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. But Angela Samuel, I speak restoration to your immune system. I speak to your chemical body now, a chemical system and your, in your body, and like chemicals, hormones, all that kind of stuff, immune system, the whole thing. In Jesus' name, let the grace of God and the virtue of God go right through our body now in the name of Jesus. Through every gland as well, right down through the throat and right down through the body. In Jesus' name, right now, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome also to uh, John Suddery and Stevie Mansfield that have joined us uh, on the program. Guys, welcome to you. Good to have you on again. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, we pray for Wendy's son, Wendy Marsh's son, that Lord, you would bring a mighty deliverance to him. And you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. I pray, Spirit of God, that you would come upon um and a Wendy's son in Jesus' name, and that you would set him free. I release the power of God over that young man in the name of Jesus. Be free in Jesus' name. Lord, send your fire upon that man. Set him free. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabasiko Rabababa Shanda. Siando Rosso Karababa Shanda. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for touching him. And people are just praying right now for Wendy's son. That's it, people of God. Pray for him. Pray for dynamic breakthrough in his situation. You know, and I want to tell you a little story, actually. Um... A lady came to me once and she said to me, she said, can you pray for my son? And I said, sure. I said, is he here? And she said, no, he's not. In fact, she was on the Isle of Wight. He was on the mainland of England. 
And I said to the woman, I said, well, um, you know, what's the problem? What do you want to pray for? And she said, well, I'm really worried about my son. I said, OK. I said, what's wrong? She said, I went into his bedroom. I said, OK. And she said, and I found all this uh, um, gay pornography in his bedroom. And I was really worried about him because, you know, I just really worried. I said, well, let's pray for him that the Lord will help him. And touch him. And um, anyway, the next night, this young man travelled from Swindon to the Isle of Wight, got a ferry boat, came over and was in that tent, in that crusade meeting. And the evangelist that was speaking that night, he kept walking up and down, didn't know that this woman and I had prayed. He's walking up and down and he picks out this young man and he said, I don't know why he said, but God keeps highlighting me to you. Anyway, the long and short of that was that young man gave his life to Jesus Christ that night. The very next day after receiving intercessory prayer, me and his mother, the evangelist picked him out. He didn't know any of that. And, and how the spirit was working to bring the answer to prayer for this young man who'd gotten all confused and all the rest of it. Uh, and it's just in terrible pain and anxiety about his whole life. And was looking into all sorts of different things. Um, but he was set free that night and met with Jesus. Amen. But his mother was worried about him and asked us to pray. And the next night he got saved. And he was touched by God. So I just tell you that story to say how God can affect the lives of people to the positive. Um... Even if they're not present, like Jesus prayed and the um, centurion's servant was healed down the road somewhere else. He wasn't there. He said, I'll come to your house. And he said, no, no, you didn't come to my house. He said, just stand right where you are and pray, Jesus. That'll be enough because I know you've got the power. See, that centurion, he knew Jesus had the power, didn't he? He knew that Jesus had all power and authority. That Roman soldier because he understood authority through his army days. And he, that Roman soldier knew that as soon as Jesus just prayed from wherever he was, the, 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 the answer was going to be affected elsewhere. In fact, Jesus marveled and said, I haven't found faith like this in all of Israel. This is what I'm talking about today. And this whole uh, 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 talk today, this whole preach today is about how to have the faith in God. That when you pray, when, when you preach, when you teach, God can make a mighty effect happen. Amen. Welcome also to uh, Abu Bakr Siddiqui as well has joined us. Welcome to the broadcast as well. Yeah, Wendy, that's exactly it. You know, the centurion servant just said to Jesus, only speak the word and my servant shall be healed. That's powerful, isn't it? And Jesus did. He spoke the word and he was healed. Glory to God. And that's why never give up in getting people to pray for your loved ones. Um, asking for prayer, things like that. Um, because whether it happens the first time you ask for prayer or on the hundredth time you ask for prayer or the thousandth time you ask for prayer. No prayer is wasted and let's keep on keeping on. To see people get free, to meet with Jesus, to know the love of God. See, if you don't know Jesus today, God wants to reach out to you. Oh, hang on, look, here we go. Uh, Alison and, Gre and Greg says, Hi, the lady everybody prayed for yesterday who had brain surgery is doing well. Praise God for that. We all prayed for this dear lady who was having brain surgery yesterday. Oh, that's wonderful news to hear that. Hallelujah. Because that's such a tricky situation. But Lord, we thank you that she's doing well. Oh, thank you, Lord, for that. Wonderful, wonderful news. Hallelujah. See, maybe today you're listening to this program and you don't know Jesus Christ. You don't know Jesus as your personal saviour. You don't know him. But you've been hearing what I've been saying. Because there are people that watch in the background. You've been hearing what I've been saying. You've been 
sensing something where you are. A presence has come where you are. That is the Holy Spirit of God confirming to you that Jesus is truly the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. He's not just a prophet. He's not just a teacher. He's not just some good guy that lived years ago and all the rest of it. He is the Son of God that brings salvation, healing, forgiveness to all those who would believe. He'll put you right with God and set you on trajectory for heaven. That's what this good news of Jesus Christ is about. The gospel simply means good news. It is the greatest news there is that you can find freedom from all the bondage and all the fear and all the shame and the anxiety and the darkness that's been over your life. The gospel of Jesus Christ will come with supernatural power and break all that off of your life and take you into a new dimension, into a new life with that you never knew you could have. That was my experience when I met Jesus Christ over 30 years ago. I saw him dying on the cross in a vision and I experienced what it was to be born again, to receive regeneration, to receive forgiveness from God and, and for shame and guilt to lift away and all these things. And he came into my life. And I pray for you today. You're watching this broadcast. And you don't know Jesus. Pray this prayer with me right now. I'm going to say it. You're going to repeat it right now. Let's do this. Everybody else, pray if that's not you. For the person watching, that they would give their heart to Jesus Christ. Pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, and you repeat. Dear Lord Jesus, come in, into my heart. I recognize I am a sinner. I recognize I need forgiveness. I thank you for dying on the cross and for shedding your blood on my behalf so that I may be forgiven. I accept your work on the cross. Forgive me now. I humbly ask you and come and live in my heart. Help me to serve you all my days. Holy Spirit, come and live powerfully inside me. Break every curse off of me and my family. And fill me to overflowing with your love and your presence. Thank you. Amen. Now if that was you and you've just prayed that, maybe you want to type it on the screen, maybe you want to send me a message. But I want to pray for you right now that the power and the fire of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. That you will be filled to overflowing with power from on high. I agree and break every curse off your life. The blood of Jesus sets you free. I command every demonic spirit to leave you now. You belong to Jesus right now. Be freed in Jesus' name. There's some other people watching this as well. You're under bondage in Jesus' name. I break the heavy yoke off of you now in Jesus' mighty name. Go now. You can feel something lifting off of you right now in Jesus' name. It's like I was seeing like a black cord. A black cord in the spirit realm wrapped around you. And it is breaking now. The anointing breaks the heavy yoke in the name of Jesus. Receive in Jesus' name right now. Just receive right now in the name of Jesus. Just receive right now in the name of Jesus. Freedom, freedom. Freedom is the children's bread. God said in Isaiah 58, Is this not the chest, the fast that I have chosen to break the bonds of wickedness? To break every shackle and chain. Set you free. Glory to God. I see somebody's foot has been like in paralysis or some problem in your foot there's a spirit of infirmity that's been uh, on your foot it's lifting now in the name of jesus your foot is being loosed now in the name 
of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Sensation return. You might feel like pins and needles or something as the blood flows, uh, as the release comes. It's almost like a snake wrapped around it. In Jesus' name, be free today, right now, in the name of Jesus. Somebody else is getting touched in their spine right now. You're feeling something on your back. Right now, type it on the screen if that's you. I want to pray with you specifically. But you're feeling this, any of these words of knowledge, just receive now in Jesus' name. Type it on the screen. That's me in Jesus' name. If that's you, just receive now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we do pray for John Suddery, son James, that he would be filled afresh with the Holy Spirit. That love and joy and peace would overwhelm him and he would know the love of God. He would know the love of God. Hallelujah. We speak that over James Suddery in Jesus' name. We speak the power of God over you, James. We lift you up to heaven. We come into agreement, all of us here around the world, for James Suddery right now, for the blessing of God, the power of God, the love of God, the fire of God. Receive in the name of Jesus. All neuropathy in the feet, go in Jesus' name. I speak to that pain in the feet. Go in Jesus' name. Wendy Marsh, right now, in the name of Jesus. Lord, rush through that body, I pray. Touch now, in Jesus' name. Somebody's neck as well. Something in the neck. Neck be loosed right now, in the name of Jesus. Hearing be touched. Somebody's hearing. Ears pop open, in Jesus' name. Deaf and dumb spirit, go! In the name of Jesus. New creative parts be inserted into those ears. Now in the name of Jesus Christ. Just receive in Jesus name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the gospel. Praise the Lord. Don't let cynicism and unbelief rob you of the things of God. Cynicism, doubt, unbelief and all that critical spirit is like a robber with a bag collecting all your blessings and running off down the hill with them. And that's a word for somebody watching me now. You were even critical then when I was praying in your heart and spirit. God's saying, look, don't get robbed of what he wants to do. If you've got a bitter, critical spirit, repent. Give it up to God. Ask him to forgive you. He will. If you're angry and raging, give it up to God. Let him heal you. Bitterness and unforgiveness, my friend, I want to help you, is a blessing blocker. Massive blessing blocker. And you've got to get rid of that stuff. D Jesus didn't say if you forgive, he said, when you forgive. It's not optional. Amen. I'm trying to help today. I'm not trying to make you feel bad or criticize you. I'm trying to help you today to navigate the minefield of the things that happen in life and the tricks of the enemy to try and get you out of that minefield so you can walk in the open field like the field behind me there and receive the blessing of God, the fullness of everything that he has for you, which is yours by right for the covenant. Angela says her ears are getting warm. In the name of Jesus, we pray for Angela Samuel's ears. Complete healing in the name of Jesus right now. Come on, everybody, agree with me right now. God is doing um, uh, something right now for Angela Samuel. There's heat on her ears. Come on, pray with me, people. It's the prayers of the saints. Together, release the power of God over Angela Samuel right now. Every one of you, pray, 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 pray right now for the healing power of God, to the glory of God, touching Angela right now. Lord, more of you, touch the Lord. Fire increase, anointing increase, healing power increase, increase with Angela Samuel right now. He sent his word and he healed them. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Uh, 
Malcolm and Neil Amkur says, I seen that black thing uh, coming off me before you pray. Amen. Neelam said this black thing was lifting off him. I was saying about that. It's lifting off because God is breaking through, releasing people, setting them free today on the broadcast. Because that is what the gospel of Jesus Christ does. Comes in to set free. The word of the Lord is sharper than a double edged sword, able to divide, remove things. The anointing breaking the heavy yoke today. In the name of Jesus. So Neelam's being set free. Angela's got heat on her ears. Uh, and uh, Wendy's just talking about suffering with neck tightness and vertigo from an accident. Father God, I pray for Wendy Marsh right now. Lord, I pray that you would lift off of her all fear and trauma and shock right now. Go in the name of Jesus. Go right now. Be released. In the name of Jesus. And I speak release and healing to that neck. I break the power of every demonic spirit associated with it. Go in Jesus name. Off of Windy Marsh. Shock. Trauma. Fear. Go. Infirmity. Go in Jesus name. Loose that woman. In Jesus name. R right now. Right now. In Jesus name. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. We speak your blessing over our sister, Wendy, today, in the name of Jesus. It was for freedom that Christ has set you free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing today. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing today. Touching people powerfully. Thank you for your mighty presence. You know, and if you're watching me now uh, and you've uh, been involved in the New Age, witchcraft, tarot cards, angel cards, that's somebody there. Um, you've been, you know, pendulum swinging, you know, all the junk that you get in the New Age shop, spiritualism, different things like that. You know, one of the reasons there's somebody watching me, you've got high blood pressure is because you've been dabbling in the occult and you need to repent of it. And God has set you free because you can get a spirit of infirmity and problems when you illicitly contact the spiritual realm outside of the Holy Spirit, Jesus and Father God. And so I pray right now that you will come under mighty conviction of every occult, new age, false religion, idolatrous Freemasonry, anything like that you've been involved with right now, repent of it now, confess it to God and ask him to forgive you of that stuff and then, then he'll free you of all this junk that's been on you but it's like a spider's web that's been around you, it's like a heavy weight you've been dragging uphill and you refuse to let go of some of your pet things, some of you got stuff in your house, get it out of your house. You're bringing a curse into your home. Have no graven image. Have no idol. Have no article or item uh, involved with these things. You know, pendulums, crystals, you know, all this stuff. Demons attach themselves to these things. Can't tell you the amount of people I've seen delivered. And I mean demons coming out of them being set free from sickness to disease as they've renounced all these false practices they've been involved with or treatments they've had done or people they've gone and consulted some guru, some different alternative weird thing. And I'll tell you, I've seen people time and time and time again set free. And I'm talking about Christian people. You can't have one foot in the in the kingdom of God and one foot in the kingdom of darkness. You've got to put both feet in God's kingdom and let go of any and everything to do with that other stuff. You can't practice divination and be a Christian and expect everything to go well with you. Stop looking at horoscopes and things like that. Stop doing all that stuff. God wants to set you free. Now, I know you may not have realized some of these things. I'm not uh, telling you off, but I'm just saying God wants to help you and set you free, my friend. In the book of Acts, when they became believers, they took all of their paraphernalia, all of their witchcraft and scrolls and spells and charms and 
and everything, and they burnt it in the street to get rid of it because they realised it was wrong and they shouldn't be involved with it, and God got them to get rid of it. That's what I love about Reinhard Bonkers' crusades in countries. They have these big oil drums at the side of the platform, and people come and put all their charms and fetishes and rings and books and things and put them in these big oil, big oil drums, and they get burnt to the ground. Hallelujah! Nothing like a good burning of idols and stuff like that. Get rid of that trash. Burn it up. Hallelujah. You don't need nothing but Jesus. And if you want spiritual stuff, get connected to the Holy Spirit. He will blow your mind more than any little demon or staring into a crystal or whatever stuff you've been up to. You know, God wants you to know I've got the glories of the kingdom of heaven to offer you. You know, in Jesus, it says we have every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Amen. Oh, it's so glorious. It's so wonderful. Having prophetic encounters with God is supernatural encounters with God. You know, things like that. We don't need the new age and the occult and all that trash and spiritualism and all this stuff. You're only talking to a demon anyway. I hope you know that. You're not talking to Uncle Johnny who passed over. You're talking to a familiar spirit that's imitating them to get you cursed and, and to put you in problems. How do you think mediums and spiritists and all that lot get their information? They've got a demon, a familiar spirit, sat on their shoulder, chippering in their ear. That's how they do it. I've seen them. And I've also seen when I prayed, they couldn't do nothing either. Hallelujah. Come on, fully get over to God's side today. Commit yourself fully to the kingdom of God. Stop being lukewarm. You're like in, out, in, out, like the okie cokey. In, out, in, out, in, out. Commit to him. Abandon this lifestyle of half in, half out. There's no peace and joy in that. Jesus said, I'd rather you were hot or cold. But don't be in the middle. There's no fun in that at all. So the most miserable people in the, in, in the world are people that sort of like one foot in the church and one foot in the world. One foot in the church and one foot, you know, and stuff like that. It's just no good. Won't do you any good. God wants you to live in the blessing and encouragement. Amen. Jesus paid a high price to set you free from every demonic thing that there is. Everything to do with the kingdom of darkness and sin and sickness and disease. He shed his blood so you could be completely free of all those things. And I'm sorry if the churches that you've been to have not offered those things to you and have not showed you the way of deliverance. But I pray that you receive this word today with the heart that it's given for freedom and for restoration and for healing for you. Because the gospel, my dear friend, is the same yesterday, today and forever. And Jesus said, go into all the world, preach the gospel. Yes. Heal the sick. Yes. And cast out devils and make disciples and so the spirit of god is about doing this all day all night all around the earth as the word of god is being preached in the name of jesus and people are receiving ministry people are getting set free from demonic powers all around the world and that is your um inheritance in jesus christ so dear friend live in the good of that today don't let the devil lie to you anymore. Stop trusting in these other things. See somebody with something round your wrist. Take it off in Jesus' name. Things can bring a curse. Did you know that? And, and you know, in witchcraft and things like that, they deliberately put curses on objects or there are spirits attached to things. Then they give them to people to keep you under control, to keep you bound. You think that's just hocus pocus and stuff like that? You ought to come to some of our meetings and see people screaming and writhing on the floor with demons coming out and you'll know that I'm talking the truth to you. Amen. He's come to set you free. And it's wonderful to be with Jesus. You see, in the kingdom of God, there is peace, righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The blessing of God, the Bible says, adds and adds no sorrow. But you won't get that in all the stuff you're messing around with. And I don't talk about this stuff too much all the time, but somebody watching me, this has been for you and you know it, you feel convicted, you know in your heart, you need to uh, release that stuff, get rid of it, amen? And if you're brave, you might even want to type the screen and say, 
it's me to publicly out yourself so that you'll do it I'll leave that with you but there's at least one person I know it's you as the Holy Spirit has shown me that's not a criticism and it's not a I don't think badly of you I'm, just, I'm trying to help you understand what I'm saying get rid of it and to get rid of your asthma and breathing problems as well. There's somebody, the reason you've got asthma and breathing problems, you've got a spirit of fear there because you've connected yourself to some other stuff. Just repent of all that stuff and ask the Lord to set you free of that asthma and that spirit of fear that's come. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I better check the time here. I don't know what the time is. Is that 8.35, is it? Yeah. Hallelujah. And so to remember today, we've been talking about our authority as believers. We've been talking about how Jesus Christ has all authority and how he's delegated that to the church. We've had a bit of a theme here about, you know, letting go of all unclean things that God wants to free us. And truly he will set you free. You want to undermine the devil? Turn your back on sin. You want to walk in love and peace and joy, walk in holiness, walk in obedience. I don't say that as a religious thing. I'm saying that as an understanding thing for you to walk in the peace of God. It's up to you. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hello to Kota, Karen Kumar as well. Just joined us there. 2.36 a.m., Donna Morris says. <laughs> it's a bit early there, Donna. Where are you, Donna, by the way? I forget where you are now. Perhaps you could just... Perhaps people would just like to type where they are on the screen as well. For those that have been watching. It's interesting for people to know where brothers and sisters are around the world. Um, joining together. Welcome also to Preeti Melita as well. If you have just joined us, I do encourage you... Uh, when the programme finishes, to watch the recording. Uh, Louisiana. OK, Donna, thanks. Um, I do encourage you to watch the recording because there's a powerful anointing again today on the broadcast. And I want you to receive everything that God wants you to receive. Stevie Mansfield's in London, England. Hallelujah. Amen. Angela Samuels in East Yorkshire, United Kingdom. Wendy's in Hershey, Pennsylvania, United States of America. 3.40 a.m. My goodness. And so you can see your people. But you see, people are keen for the word of God. That's why they'll watch at 3.40 a.m. Or 2.40 a.m. Or whatever is the time where they are. Because that's where people will tune in. Betty Baker's in California in the United States. But wherever we are today, we are all one in Jesus Christ. Amen. Whether you're white, black, brown, yellow, red-skinned person, whatever country you're from, whatever tribe or group, whatever language group you're from, we're all one in Jesus Christ, one in the Messiah, uh, the body of Christ around the world. 108 p.m. where Kota Kumar is, hallelujah, in India. Uh, Colette McCauley's in Ireland. Northern, is that Northern or, or as in Southern Ireland era? Where, where you are, Colette. Hallelujah. Well, Lord, I know, you know, the Code of Kumar is saying pray for India. Well, Lord, we do pray indeed for the gospel of Jesus Christ to prevail in India. Over a billion people, I believe, in India. One of the largest mission fields in the world. Arrow. OK, um, Lord, I pray in Jesus mighty name for India. We pray for Kota Kumar and all of our Indian friends that join us on the program. The Lord, that they would all bear fruit in their lives and in their ministries and that a great breakthrough would come wherever they are in their towns and villages and cities. Lord, we pray breaking through again. In India, we lift up the Indian church to you. And we pray, Lord, fill it with your Holy Spirit. Fill them with the word of Jesus, we pray. And may the fire of God break forth in the churches of India. 
Lord, we pray for that great and mighty harvest to come in in the great nation of India in the name of Jesus. Bring the people in, Lord, we pray. Bring them out of Hinduism, out of Buddhism, uh, out of the Muslims, out of everything. Let them meet with Jesus. Let them meet with the Son of God. Meet with salvation, I pray. Mighty move of your spirit. I know you're doing wonderful things there already, Lord. But we pray fuel to the fire of evangelism revival in India. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, Colette's in uh, error. Uh, I'm, I'm half Irish Colette. Um, my mother was from Dungarvan in County Waterford. Um, so... Yeah, um, why not sound it? But I am indeed half Irish, you know. Anyway, <laughs> God bless you. Um, Denise Hunt, this morning, Chris. Uh, we are one in Jesus. You are coming through loud and clear this morning. Broke my ankle a few days ago. Oh, no. Hey, come on, people. We need to pray for Denise right now. It's broken her ankle. That's no good. Father God, we pray right now for Denise Hunt. Lord, let your healing power come upon that ankle right now in the name of Jesus Christ. It's supernaturally knit back together. Lord, we pray for your healing. We pray that the swelling would go down, the bone would be knit together, that all the tendons and the muscles and the nerves would be healed in Jesus' name. And your fire go right through that foot that uh, ankle, the leg, the shin, in Jesus' name, right through there, Lord, we pray, in the name of Jesus. And everybody around the world says yes and amen to that. Touch her, Lord, we pray. Right now, David Boone, Newport, Isle of Wight, England, that's where David is. Hallelujah. But truly, you can see we're a multinational, multi-ethnic group here today. But one in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, God bless every one of you that's been on the program with me today. I do encourage you to watch the recording to get the rest of the broadcast. Do share the program with somebody you know. Um, do like the program. Do comment, whatever. Um, do sign up for notifications. Uh, it's if you want to know when it's on, so you'll get a little ding when it comes on, when I come live. Um, share it into groups if you feel that's necessary. Feel free to do all of that. We just want people to be touched by the power of God and receive the word of God. And so do share, 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 that kind of thing. If you've been touched today by the power of God and the fire of God or any other program, you know, you might want to write a little thing. I've been touched by this today. Watch and then post it like that. You see, when we recommend things, our friends will listen. Because people know you, they respect you, and they've got a relationship with you. And that's how we spread the word and get things out more and more and more and more, is by sharing. You know, so do share it. Perhaps write a little thing at the top. Tell people, but not don't just share it. Maybe write a little thing at the top of what happened to you or what impacted you or whatever, because that's the sort of thing that catches the attention of people. To, to and we want people to receive what the Holy Spirit is bringing in the Word of God. Amen. So God bless you today, wherever you've been watching from, whether you've been openly on the broadcast or, you, or you've been in the background watching. I speak the blessing of God upon you. We speak the love of God to you today. Uh, and may you have a good day. God bless you. Do pray for me tonight. Um, I'm at a meeting in Southampton, England tonight. Um, and so do pray for that because we want God's spirit and power to be strong. I've been meeting with a group of people. And we've been experiencing a wonderful presence of God. God's been doing wonderful things. And the more and more and more, we just want to expand the kingdom of God in every way we can. So whatever meetings we have live or uh, or at the moment daily live broadcasts like this. You know, do pray for divine appointments and divine connections and for those opportunities and doors to open to release this anointing to as many people as possible. As many people as possible. 
Because I just want to see people touched by the love and the power and the fire of God. Amen. It's wonderful to see the transformation of what Jesus will do in the lives of people. It's wonderful to see people healed, delivered and set on fire. And for you to know you have a living relationship with God. Remember what I said earlier on in the broadcast. You're not alone. Amen. Do watch the rest of the program if you've just joined in. You'll enjoy that. And I'll catch you again another day. All right. So from here, from the uh, Isle of Wight, you can see the sun is out. The sky is blue and the fields are green. I'll catch you again another day. God bless you wherever you are today. Uh, whether you're watching the recording or on the live program now, equally know the Spirit of God is with you just as much on the recording. People have been set free and delivered watching the recording, healed, watching the recording. So don't think if you miss it, oh no, I've missed it, that's it. I'm not going to be touched by God. That's not true. Also, I'd like to say another point on that. I do monitor the comments that come in. And so if that, somebody does put a prayer request in after they've been watching a program or something, then I will get that and they will get prayed for. I usually just like it so you know I've done it. I've prayed for it. Um, and so... If you see it liked, you know I've seen it. Amen. And uh, um, we, we pray for those things. All right, so take care. God bless you. Catch you again another day. Bye-bye.